Hi, I'm Scott Lucas. This is today's EA Worldview on Syria. As the U.S. steps back, France and Saudi Arabia step forward. Early this week, there were two notable incidents which highlighted the fact that the United States is now on the sidelines of the conflict, and perhaps more importantly, that other countries aren't content to stay there. France and Saudi Arabia agreed on a series of steps, beginning with support for the Syrian National Coalition, the opposition political movement, and the Supreme Military Council, the umbrella group which claims to represent the insurgency inside Syria. Leave aside for a moment that both the Council and the Coalition are struggling to get recognition from groups inside the country, that they are largely seen as being ineffective and out of touch. France and Saudi Arabia were sending a signal to the United States which was, you may have decided not to carry out airstrikes. You may have decided not to give supplies, not to give arms to the insurgents. You may have decided that you'll prefer simply to talk about chemical weapons and getting an agreement alongside your new friend Russia, but we're going a different way. France and Saudi Arabia effectively were saying, we continue to retain the option of providing arms to try to turn the war against President Assad. We continue to try to retain the option that we will be forthright in supporting the opposition and not reticent, talking about, well, maybe Assad can stay in power. And to back this up, France announced that it has signed a multi-billion dollar deal with Saudi Arabia to modernize the Saudi Navy and possibly to reshape Saudi air defenses. That's a big financial as well as political slap in the face to Washington. And it wasn't the only one. In Ankara, Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan gave a statement which was nothing less than an effective slap to U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Kerry had said on Monday that President Assad should be praised for cooperating with the process which seeks to dismantle his chemical weapons. Erdogan was in no mood to give praise. Instead, he said, how can you stand there and congratulate? How can you stand there and basically uplift a man who has killed more than 100,000 of his people, not just with chemical weapons, but with conventional weapons? And Erdogan has a point. The same Assad that John Kerry was praising on Monday was the president that John Kerry said was like Hitler only last month. There is a lot of overwrite comment right now that U.S. power is declining, that the United States, in effect, is being shown that with the step aside from the Middle East, it no longer carries influence. That doesn't concern me at this point. What matters is what happens in Syria. And as we said last month, just because the United States makes a decision that it doesn't want to intervene doesn't mean that others are going to stand by and simply shrug their shoulders. Saudi Arabia, in particular, is committed. They are committed to supporting this insurgency, and they are committed to the fall of President Bashar al-Assad. And they will not stop because Washington says, perhaps it's not in the U.S. fight anymore. France will not stop either, nor will Turkey. Whatever Washington wants to try to dream away with the supposed demolition of chemical weapons, the conflict and the intervention of other countries will go on. I'm Scott Lucas. This is today's EA Worldview on Syria.